We are visiting the ancient town of Gubbio in Umbria, in the heart of Italy. If you like the small medieval towns of Italy with their stone buildings and pedestrian lanes, you will love Gubbio. It's one of the largest and best preserved medieval towns in all of Italy. Gubbio is located in Umbria between Florence and Rome and it's not very well known but you will see it's a beautiful destination. Gubbio does not get crowded with tourists which makes it a more authentic destination and it's especially peaceful in the month of November as I'm visiting here. Most travelers, even if you're very experienced, have never heard of the town of Gubbio in Umbria in Italy. Well, we are going to take you there. We were lucky to meet Isabella, who is not a professional tour guide. She's a journalist and sommelier, but she's born and raised in Gubbio and very knowledgeable and enthusiastic about her hometown. She's going to take us on a walking tour. We're visiting Gubbio, which is one of the great medieval stone towns of Italy. We're in Umbria and uh, we're fortunate to be walking with, with Isabella, who's going to take <laughs> us around and show us all these great sights of this amazing town of Gubbio. It's about a thousand years old, but it has origins that go back 3,000 years. It's really got a lot of history. I am Isabella, I live in Gubbio, I am born in Gubbio, and uh, Gubbio is uh, my town, it's very, very beautiful. You come with me for uh, one walk to Gubbio, it's okay? <laughs> Behind me, the Palazzo dei Consoli. Uh -huh. The palace up on the hill, the Palazzo dei Consoli, was the seat of power hundreds of years ago, and we'll take you in there later. It's a great museum with arts and sculptures and artifacts from the Middle Ages. But for now, we're taking you on our walking tour into a very old part of Gubbio, the district of San Martino. We cross the little stream that runs through town into San Martino, which is a very pleasant neighborhood with winding lanes and little cafes and neighborhood shops and very old buildings. This river is uh, Camignano, and uh, in uh, springtime uh, the children uh, play to football. This is uh, Piazza Giordano Bruno. Um, a main piazza in San Martino? The main Piazza San Martino. Okay. The piazza is named after Giordano Bruno, who was a Dominican friar, and there's the Church of San Domenico right on the piazza, so there's a connection between those two. Interesting to notice the two layers of church facade. You have the original stone front, and then we have a later facade that was added and partly broke off. Giordano Bruno was a great intellect back in the late 1500s, and unfortunately, he was burned at the stake for his beliefs that there were many universes and that the earth rotated around the sun. Bruno believed that stars had planets around them just like our solar system. Heretical beliefs for the Catholic Church. This is uh, the door of the dead. This door of the dead is a curious feature unique to Gubbio. Gubbio is quite proud of these doors of the dead which are found in many of the old buildings and yet nobody is quite sure what they were used for. Is that door of the dead? Also. Also? This is uh, the door of the day. Uh huh. Wow. One belief is the door was used for removing people who died inside the building. Another belief is that it was a, a door that the owner could use for more security. There's a curious round stone section of paving in the street that is believed to be an artifact left over from the earliest days of Gubbio, from the time of the Umbri, the earliest settlers over 2,000 years ago, and yet its function is unknown. And uh, this is the palace of uh, Capitano del Popolo. Capitano del Popolo means captain of the people 
which was a very important person in Italy back in the Middle Ages. He was like the mayor of the city, and he was a countervailing power to the nobles. So the captain of the people was the representative of the wealthy merchant class that was growing in power and rivaling that of the nobility. The popolo had their own army and councils and legal system and played a very important role in the political life of Italian cities in the Middle Ages. This old neighborhood has a fine example of a medieval tower. These were like skyscrapers in the Middle Ages. They were for protecting the household in case of attack. Just wandering through these pleasant lanes in the small district of San Martino was one of my favorite parts of the entire visit to Gubbio. It's always important to visit the museums and monuments and go in the important churches, have some great meals, do a little shopping. But really one of the most rewarding activities you can ever do when you're traveling is just simply walking through the local neighborhoods, being observant, taking a look at what's going on. Look at the buildings, the stones, the pavement, the people, the dogs going by, the shops. Just walk and listen and look. It's a very rewarding experience. This is uh, the Borgo of Santa Lucia. And uh, there is uh, another gate. This arch of uh, Santa Croce. Santa Croce. Santa Croce. Hmm. And now we're in the Borgo of Santa Lucia, which is part of the old town even though it's outside the main wall. And yet there's another wall and another gate that helped to enclose this little district of Santa Lucia. And this is the theater. The municipal theater, Teatro Comunale, was inaugurated first in 1738. And then in 1846, it was renovated and rebuilt and enlarged in a more refined style. And today it's a very active theater presenting various kinds of programs, mostly plays as well as concerts and ballets and recitals and lectures and various community gatherings. Next, Isabella is going to take us to the most important historic sites of the city. Come Danny, this is Via dei Consoli. We go uh, to the Palazzo dei Consoli. It's, it's very, very beautiful. And uh, the Piazza Grande, it's magnific. As we walk along Via dei Consoli, which is a small street, but it's one of the main streets of Gubbio. It's largely a pedestrian zone in the historic center. We get to Largo Bargello, which has the famous fountain of the town. It was the main water source back in the medieval days for a large part of the town. Now if you run around it three times, you go crazy, they say. This is uh, Dennis, it's uh, a Palazzo dei Consoli. Palazzo dei Consoli is a very important palace in medieval for uh, the government of people. The Palazzo dei Consoli is a huge building constructed in the 14th century with a magnificent staircase out front and towering way way above the town. The top of the tower is 80 meters above the lowest level, which is about 250 feet high, a medieval skyscraper, really remarkable. And part of it, the main Piazza Grande, is held up by these immense arches. These were built in the 1400s, but in an ancient Roman style and somewhat in emulation of ancient Rome because Gubbio saw itself as a new Rome. And it's a remarkable construction holding up this great Piazza Grande, which is really the main square of Gubbio. Via Baldessini is the street down below at the foundation of the Palazzo structure. Looking back on a neighborhood we've already explored in our visit to Gubbio the old San Martino Quarter. The piazza has two main buildings, the Palazzo dei Consoli and the City Hall, also called the Palazzo Podesta. They were built about the same time in the early 1300s. This is a, a medieval room of uh, Comune di Cubio. And uh, this is uh, original column uh, 
of the basement at the up. It's an octagonal column. The medieval architect Matteo Gattaponi ran this single column all the way through the building, supporting all three floors. What is this room? This room is a conciliar hall. This palace is a seat of uh, government of the city. It's the city hall. <laughs> <laughs> so it's for the mayor and the, yes, yes. the council. Yes, the, the council. council. Like city the council. Yes, the city council. City council. This is uh, the gonfalone of the city. Okay. The symbol. The symbol of the city. The, the tower of the city. Tower. The tower. The tower. The door of the city. This is the mount of the city. The mountain. Five mount of the city. Mm -hmm. And right. the tree. Quercia. 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 Looking out the window from City Hall, we have another fine perspective on the Piazza Grande and the Palazzo dei Consoli. We're going to be taking you inside the Palazzo in just a moment, but first enjoying more of the view looking out over the stone town of Gubbio. Most of those buildings you see are about 500 years old and more. The staircase in front of the Palazzo is really quite a work of architecture. It has two levels. One takes you up to the main hall and the other to the ground floor. The main hall is one of the largest medieval rooms ever built. It is simply immense. It occupies the entire main floor of the Palazzo dei Consoli. It was the meeting room for the leaders of the city. So you go upstairs and find a picture gallery museum and original rooms with original hallways. It's an interesting museum, but the interior of the building is even more interesting than the artifacts on exhibit. And from here, you get a fantastic view looking out over the city, especially late in the afternoon as we're enjoying a bit of golden light coming in, looking down on the clay tile roofs and stone walls and narrow lanes of Gubbio. And from the other end of the terrace, you have a view looking up at the Duomo, the cathedral, and back across the Piazza Grande at the city hall. And you wander freely through the museum. There's some important ceramic dishes here that were made by Master Giorgio. Production of ceramics is still a very important craft in Gubbio. These bronze tablets are over two and a half thousand years old, and they're written in the ancient Umbrian script. They're the only examples of ancient Umbrian writing ever found. And they have some sorts of religious meanings that have been deciphered because there's also Latin script written on the same tablets. It's like a Rosetta Stone, among the oldest written languages in Europe. And of course, the museum has a number of frescoes from the early Renaissance and the Byzantine periods and some artifacts that go as far back as the Roman occupation of this very ancient town as we wind down our visit to Palazzo di Consoli. We are continuing our walking tour of Gubbio with our local friend Isabella, who knows this city inside and out. We have many beautiful arches. <laughs> this big old wine barrel was kept underneath the cathedral it could hold several thousand liters of wine for the priests in the church. And now we're approaching the Grand Duke's Palace, the Palazzo Ducale. The ruler lived here. And he had a very lovely garden with a terrace looking out over the town. This is a Palazzo Ducale, Palazzo of Federico da Montefeltro, Duca di Urbino. Dukes of Urbino. You might be familiar with the Duke and his strange nose because of this famous painting hanging in Florence by Piero della Francesca. The Duke was a very important leader in Gubbio and the region back in the 1400s. A beautiful grand entryway. This is a barrel vaulted. The palace was built for the Duke in the 1480s who ruled Gubbio and Umbria with the help of the Medicis in Florence. And so the Duke of Urbino had a very central location for his palace just between 
the other palace and the Duomo and the city hall and a beautiful view looking down on the town which his line dominated for 200 years. Countryside around the city. A smaller palace is next door which is now a four-star hotel. It's called Relais du Calais. Well, this is a hill town, so some of the streets are very steep. And many of them are for pedestrians only. They're really staircases, too steep for a car to go up. And they are just beautiful with their flowers and plantings and gardens along the steps and the low alleys. It's really great fun. It's like a maze to walk around in Gubbio. We have uh, many, many little streets. It does help to be in pretty good condition. We have three main streets, Via Gabrielli, Via 20 September and Via Mazzini. Uh -huh. yeah. This is uh, Via 20 September. 20 so, September. Uh -huh. Main Street. Main Street, mm -hmm. Via 20 September. And then a lovely crooked street. The name is uh, Largo of uh, Vescovato. We have the archived and uh, the document very, very old. From the churches? F ah, yes, uh, from the church. Mm -hmm. Largo del Vescovato. And it curves. And it curves around. It does. Kind of reminds you of Lombard Street in San Francisco, except here there's no cars. It's strictly for pedestrians. It's very nice, very, very old. Notice the brilliant design and brick paving of the walkway, which makes it very easy to walk up this little hill. Well, we're continuing our walk along the Via 20th of September, passing some beautifully decorated buildings and more of these little side lanes and ancient stone buildings. Danny, this is uh, the door of San Marziale, and uh, this is uh, the church of San Marziale, the Romanic church. Romanesque church. Romanesque church. Thick columns, heavy stone construction, low ceilings and small windows, all indicators of a very old church built in the Romanesque style, which is older than the Gothic. San Marziale is one of the oldest churches in Gubbio. And now get ready for a most unusual experience. We are going to the Funivia. It's like a cable car. It's like a ski lift. It's like a chair lift. And yet it's something quite unique to Gubbio. It's this little wire basket. It's like a bird cage that you jump into kind of on the run. This thing doesn't stop. There's uh, an attendant there to help you out and you hop on board and you ride up in the open air, up the mountain. Take a look as we hop on the Funivia. Boom. On the go. He holds it back for just a moment so you can hop in and he shuts the gate for you and you're really quite safe and quite secure, but it's almost like you're just flying or floating. There's nothing between you and the mountain. So the main reason why this Funivia was constructed in the first place was to bring you up the hill so you can visit the church of Santubaldo, who is the patron saint of Gubbio. Why just to go to the church? Yes, the church, the first church, church of the city. Mm -hmm. It's a basilica of Santubaldo. He was a very important religious leader about a thousand years ago. And then we arrive at the top and get helped out of our little basket. Well, from the top, you also get this great view as well as being able to visit the church, the Basilica of Santubaldo. Looking down on Gubbio, you see what a great collection of medieval structures you've got down below. Here's the Basilica. The saint is buried inside. His body is still very well preserved from a thousand years ago. 
Then you can have a picnic up on top. There's a couple of benches with a wonderful vista down below. There are also some hiking trails up here and you could walk down if you want to, but it's easier to ride. And then it's time to head on back down. You do the same routine. You hop in this basket on the run and he snaps the door shut behind you and off you go. It's like you're flying. And it's cool and breezy up there. Fortunately, you're not really high above the ground, so you're not gonna get too much of a scared feeling of vertigo, probably. We're getting some of the taste of the fall colors as well. And notice how empty it was. We were the only customers, it seemed, that afternoon. We're traveling in the month of November, and most sites in Umbria in general were pretty devoid of tourists, which was really quite lovely. So we could hop on and hop off very easily. We're visiting a couple of the small shops and businesses in Gubbio in Umbria, Italy, and found some of the most friendly people you'll ever meet. They are my friend Francesco. Good morning. Francesco, good morning. Buongiorno. And this is the uh, Salumeria. Salumeria and uh, Macelleria. Artigianale, Diro. Si. Make uh, ma and made. And made. Come, come. Okay. And and then we enjoyed some free tastings in Francesco's friendly shop. Okay. This is the Crescia. It's a, a bre bread, mm -hmm. bread, mm -hmm. typical bread. Typical bread, wow. Oh my gosh, a sandwich. <laughs> okay, so we sampled the uh, prosciutto and the fresh breads in San Martino. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Very good. We have uh, every time the wine. Oh, everywhere the wine. <laughs> In this shop, house of wine. House of wine. <laughs> chin chin. <Okay. laughs> Alla salute. Chin chin. Chin chin. Grazie. Grazie, Francesco. We have uh, wine, typical wine of market, handmade, uh, the typical product. Okay. This is uh, the typical sauces. This is uh, the typical sauces. Francesco doesn't sell the wine, he gives it away, making his shop very popular. Delicious. Okay, ciao. Well Thank you. <laughs> Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Nearby is another gateway through the old medieval wall, the Porta Castello. We stopped to have a look inside the leather shop at the gateway and have a look at the handmade bags and Isabella got roped into helping the repair job with her long fingers. She was able to assist this man who was repairing a strap and a zipper on a bag. So she joined right in, got recruited, small town style. And now Isabella leads us further along Via dei Consoli, one of the main streets of Little Gubbio. It's lined with shops and cafes and restaurants. We're gonna take you on a walk uphill in Gubbio. After all, this is a hill town. It's located on the side of a mountain. So quite a few of the streets are staircases. No cars allowed there, it's too steep. As we continue walking along the 20th of September Street and up via Mastro Giorgio Street, another staircase, into some of the little alleyways in the upper town. It's evening now at about five o'clock. The sun goes down in November, so it gets dark quite early. And yet it's so atmospheric and medieval as you walk along through these lanes. And of course, it's completely safe. This is a small town. Enter. And we're invited into this interesting ironworker shop. They're pounding away on wrought iron and grinding and welding, doing all sorts of crafts and handmade work here. All hand craftsmen following a trade that's been passed down for thousands of years. It's rather gratifying to know that small-scale manufacturing can still occur at the neighborhood level in a small town on a human scale like this, and they're producing 
quality goods that their neighbors will want to purchase. We continue strolling into the night in Gubbio. Gubbio is world famous for its truffles. San Francesco e Il Lupo is one of the nice restaurants in Gubbio in which you can enjoy that local delicacy, the truffle, which is found in such abundance that they even put it on pizza. And it was not terribly expensive. Let's say about $18 for a nice pizza. And then you move into other courses. You can have truffle on bruschetta, have truffle on your pasta, and have some truffle on your main course, some sliced beef. They put truffle on practically everything in Gubbio. It's one of the better places in the world to be hunting for truffle. And the restaurant is very friendly, not very busy in November. So the locals are here. It's almost like a family dining room and very casual. Uh, local kids come over and say hello. My name is Madalena. 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 Okay. San Francesco e Il Lupo was so nice, I went back for dinner after having lunch there. The name of the restaurant relates to the legend of St. Francis coming to Gubbio and taming a wild wolf that was threatening the people. Il Lupo. Excellent restaurant right in the heart of town at the main crossroads. Truffles are so popular in this area, this region of Umbria, that there are several stores in town that sell truffles. You can buy the raw truffle or buy them in jars in a sauce to take home with you. And now Isabella leads us further along Via dei Consoli, one of the main streets of Little Gubbio, and we visited her favorite truffle shop. Tell me the price. How much for the whole basket? 280 euro for 100 grams. This is 400 grams. 400 grams. So yeah. four. So about 1,000 euro. Uh huh. Okay. And this, the black one, 80 euro, 80 euro. for uh -huh. 100 grams. The summer black truffle too. Oh, different is different. More expensive. Different quality. More flavor. Yeah. Stronger flavor. The white ones, it's made for pasta. Mm -hmm. This is the white truffle inside, and this uh, black truffle inside, and mushrooms too. This, the black one, it's special for how do you say in English? Toast. Toast. Bruschetta. Hot bruschetta. Yeah. Hot mm -hmm. and cold bruschetta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And this is. Also, uh, pure black truffle. Pure, pure black truffle. In uh, oil, olive oil. Olive oil. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, what do you think? It's good? It's so very, 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 very good. good. <laughs> I <Yeah>. like it. <laughs> <laughs> with pasta, bruschetta, rice, with eggs, with eggs. eggs frittata, special, mm, special. frittata, special eggs, special. And so these are from Gubbio, from yeah. the area. This, uh, yes, this is uh, this truffle is uh, from uh, area of Gubbio, mm -hmm. uh, mountain of Gubbio, Appennino. 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 So is it one of Italy's best truffle areas? Uh, yes, it's the very best uh, area of truffle. Yes. Wow. The shop is here, uh -huh. over there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is the big tree of, Christ, uh, see, of Christmas. And in these mountains, Snow. you can find a truffle. Oh, I see. The, in France, they have uh, the um, Perigord. Now tell me the name of the shop. Tartuffi di Gubbio. Tartuffi. Truffle of Gubbio. That's your shop. And yeah. your name? What's your name? Francesca. Francesca. It's remarkable that Gubbio has three different kinds of truffles and they're in season for half the year. Coming up soon at the end of the movie, I'll tell you about some hotel choices here and also discuss how to get to Gubbio from other parts of Italy. Here's a hint. If you don't have a rental car, it's better to get here by bus than by train, as we'll explain later. But first, we're going to have dinner. Something wonderful happened. Isabella invited me to come home and have dinner with the family. 
and it turned out to be a marvelous evening. Julio and Camilla. Camilla. <laughs> Camilla and Julio. Julio. In the taverna. In taverna. We have the fire. Beautiful fire. It's amazing. And we meet Isabella's mother, who is also quite a world traveler. Miranda. 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 Yeah. Okay, Miranda. Very nice. Their dining room was a taverna hundreds of years ago, and now it's a beautiful place where the kids can play soccer on roller skates, Italian style. They live in a multi level medieval stone building in the heart of Gubbio with three apartments for family and friends. When the kids found out that I'm from Hawaii, they did a hula for me. Amazing that the hula is known all over the world, from little Hawaii to little Gubbio, being entertained by little Italian hula dancers. This was too much for me. There you are. See on the camera? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Then we sat down and ate dinner. Oh, what a meal and the wines. Isabella is actually a sommelier. She's not a professional tour guide, and her friend is also a sommelier. They were heading out the next morning to do some wine tasting and purchasing for local restaurants. It's a wonderful, wonderful and it was just a great evening with family and friends at home in Gubbio one of the nicest nights I've ever had in my travels. The food was delicious, company was great, wine was excellent of course, everybody had a good time. It turns out that hospitality is a honored tradition in Gubbio that dates back to the Middle Ages. When the nobles wanted to entertain a stranger coming through town, they had to compete for the attention of these visitors. And then we had some fun watching the movie that Isabella and I had just been making in walking around Gubbio that same day. I made a quick cut, rough edit to show the family that same night. And we all had a lot of fun watching an instant replay of some of the scenes that make up this movie. Dinner with Isabella and friends and family in Gubbio was one of the great experiences of all my Europe travels. There are over a dozen hotels in the central part of town with a range of quality from some two stars, some vacation rentals, and there are several four star hotels. As we've already shown, there is enough to see and do in Gubbio that you'll want to spend at least one, maybe two nights. Some of the lodgings are so small, they call themselves a residence rather than hotel, such as Residenza di Via Picardi, conveniently located on a pedestrian lane in the old town. This is a Residenza di Via Picardi, and we have a six room. The room have the, the bathroom, is it including breakfast. We have this, uh, this garden. The garden is a welcome green oasis in the middle of this relatively dense stone medieval village. These small hotels are located right in the heart of the old town, but if you have a car, there are many other choices in the surrounding countryside, including some agroturismo, where you can stay on a farm or in a rustic lodge. And there are nearly a hundred such choices available in the surrounding countryside, but you will need a car. However, it's very nice to stay in a little hotel in the old town where everything is so convenient and pedestrian friendly. You don't really need a car when you're here. You can also find vacation rentals, apartments for rent, and for breakfast, go down to the cafe on the corner. They open up early. Get your typical Italian quick breakfast of a cornetto and cappuccino. There are several four-star hotels available if you'd like to pamper yourself and splurge a little bit. Another reason to stay for one or two nights is that 
Gubbio is not the easiest town to get to. If you are not driving a rental car, the best way to get here is by the bus system. For example, from Perugia, a major city just one hour away. On the other hand, if you come by train, it's a little bit inconvenient because the train station is just too far away, whereas the bus will drop you off right in the town center. The loggia near the bus stop with the columns used to be for stretching wool in the old days. Now it's a cafe scene with an outdoor market. The intercity bus stop you're looking for is across the piazza from that loggia, and you hop right on, you can buy your ticket on board, passing the ancient Roman amphitheater. Whereas if you wanted to take the train, the station is 23 kilometers away, and then the train ride takes longer than the direct bus. So the bus will get you to Perugia, for example, in half the time, about 70 minutes. And it's a pleasant drive through the countryside making it very easy to visit this amazing city of Gubbio. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.